Hi again, welcome back to Coding Club. Last time, we introduced ourselves to computer science and got familiar with what the subject is all about. We also touched base in algorithms and got started with Code.org. Hopefully, you found it fun and challenging enough to put in some time at home. You may have already started writing the code yourself if you found the show text button on Code.org. We're going to try to move away from the buttons altogether and start writing with our first coding language. But first, what really is code? That seems like an obvious question. Think back to when you were coding with Angry Birds. You would drag blocks onto the canvas to instruct the red bird where to go. Computers use code as instructions to tell them what to do. Since algorithms are sets of instructions, in a way, every program you write is essentially an algorithm. Of course, the programming we did in code.org isn't very applicable in the real world. If you enter move forward into the command prompt onto your computer, it isn't actually going to go anywhere. Before we start writing our own code and programs, we have to choose a coding language. Some of the most common programming languages are Python, C, Java, and JavaScript. Python is probably the most famous language. It was designed to be versatile, meaning it can be used for many different things. And it was meant to be readable, meaning it doesn't look like a giant block of code on your screen. Because of its simplicity and how common it is, it's one of the better languages to start learning first. In the real world, Python is often used by software developers for testing their software. Big companies and organizations like Facebook, Google, and NASA use Python for their web applications and projects in development. Python is commonly used in data science and artificial intelligence, and many games have been made with Python as well. C is another fairly general programming language. It was released back in 1972, so that would probably make it older than your teacher. The language isn't very complicated, and it was designed to be as such to be as efficient as possible. Its ability to compute quickly is what makes it so powerful. C itself is generally used in stock analysis and programs that are required to perform at a high level. C is also used often in developing operating systems. If you don't know what an operating system is, an operating system is the base level software system on your computer. Its job is to manage the computer's basic functions, executing applications, and managing software and hardware resources along with interacting with you, the user, and allowing you to organize and manage your files, run your favorite games, and do all the wonderful things you do on a computer. Common operating systems on PCs are Windows, Mac, and Linux. On mobile, the most widely used operating systems are iOS and Android. Operating systems have the task of running your whole computer, and so they are often developed using the C language to make them as quick and efficient as possible. As the demands of programmers changed over the years, other variations of C such as C Sharp and C++ were created. C++ is also used in a variety of ways. It's used everywhere from banking systems to flight simulators, game engines, along with databases and the cloud. Similar to C++, C Sharp is a little more specialized in developing games. C Sharp is the language of choice for the most popular game engine in the world, Unity, and it's a favorite among developers to build their games quickly. Next up is Java. Java is written similarly to C++. Java, however, is strictly an object-oriented programming language. OOP is when every aspect of the program is considered its own object. Objects are like separate programs which can be assigned their own separate characteristics and still intertwine with each other and the main program. Let's say you're developing a game with an object-oriented language. The main game mechanics can be made in the main program, and every character in the game can be a separate object. This way, you can alter the characters in your game without affecting other aspects of it. In contrast to OOP, a scripting language is just a single text document that contains code which is read from top to bottom by a computer. Generally, when people think of coding, they think of scripting languages. Python is an example of a scripting language. Java is a popular choice for creating web applications. Many games have also been made with Java, including Minecraft. Finally, JavaScript. Even though its name literally has Java in it, the language is most influenced by C. JS is a scripting language that you have already started to use on Code.org. It's most commonly used for web development, primarily on the client side. When you visit a website on your computer, you're connecting with the server that runs that website. Your computer becomes the client. 
JavaScript runs the code of the website on your web browser instead of the server, and can even function without communicating with the web server. This means if you're filling out a survey online, once you hit submit, JavaScript can make sure you filled out everything before the web server even gets your submission. Even though JS is commonly used for websites, there's still plenty of other things you can do with it and it's a great language to learn first. This is why we'll be practicing it more today. Once you learn one language, it'll become much easier to branch out the other ones. One thing you should know about programming languages is how computers read them. There are two main levels when it comes to programming. The top level is consisted of high-level coding languages that programmers use to write code. All four of the languages we just talked about are high-level languages. They're meant to be easy to read and understand and generally use logical words and symbols. For example, when we coded with Angry Birds, it was easy to understand what the function of the move forward block was compared to this. High-level languages need to be compiled or interpreted so that computers can understand them. Low-level languages include assembly and machine code. These languages do not use regular words or symbols and are hard to read. Machine code, also known as binary, is literally just ones and zeros. Once a high-level language is converted to low-level, it gets inputted into the computer's processor. The output is then sent to the operating system or an application, where it is represented in a way we can understand. Machine code is technically lower than assembly in the hierarchy of languages, as assembly does contain some readable commands. Some developers manually write code with assembly to optimize their programs, but nobody really writes code with machine code. So now you know that when you write a command in JavaScript, an interpreter changes it to something the computer can read, it gets inputted into the processor, which releases the output to the operating system, and gets converted to something we can understand. I said we'd practice writing JavaScript more, so here's your next assignment. Head over to CodeHS.com. Similar to Code.org, the sign up button is in the top right. Click Create Student Account, and here you should put in your information and the course code you'll get from your teacher. Once you're in, you should be in your student page. If you're not, just click on your name in the top right and you'll get the option to go there. Of course, you won't be involved in as many courses as I am, but you will see the course that you just signed up for. If you don't see it, then scroll down and hit the Join section button. There will be a prompt asking you for the class code again. When you're ready, click on the course. Here you'll see everything the course has to offer. You can skip the pretest if you like, it's not very important. We'll start with programming with Carol. You'll get used to the Code HS style of teaching pretty quick. They start off by teaching you with a video, you get to look at examples, and then you get to try coding on your own. Programming with Carol is pretty similar to what we did with Angry Birds, but it's still a good exercise because you'll learn how JavaScript is written and how it's executed by a compiler. After you complete the unit, you'll work on the challenges, and then move on to the next. Soon you'll be learning about user input, variables, functions, and even how to make some basic games. Hopefully you can find CodeHS to be fun. Try doing some at home if you can. In the coming weeks you can try to do some challenges. In the meantime, happy coding.